Peace, peace, peace. What it is, it's your brother Tyvon Swaino, a.k.a. the Orthodox Moor. A real quick, family, I want to get into something that I noticed last night that I hadn't noticed, that I, I hadn't seen in a long time. So uh, yesterday on the SVDL Live channel, um, I rebroadcast uh, a discussion that went down last year between uh, Sawara Garvey, myself, Brother Kansu, and a good name, brother, whose name I can't recall at the moment. My, my apologies, brother. Um, uh, on the Black Ice TV 7 channel. It was a USA, UK link up, or UK, USA link up, excuse me, um, set up between Brother Rich and uh, Brother Solomine of the Solar Vision Debate League, of which I am a member. And we had a conversation about um, uh, our Abrahamic tradition is good for, for uh, African descent people, black people, etc people in the diaspora and in this conversation and in a debate that brother uh Sara garvey had with imam bashir who's also uh, a member of the debate league that was also on black ice tv set uh, black ice tv seven and also partially set up with their brother solomon and brother rich they had a debate on the same topic a flat-out debate on the same topic basically um like the authenticity of god Abrahamic traditions, you know what I'm saying? Um, and basically, if Muhammad was racist or not. That wasn't the actual title, but that's what it came down to. Be. And in both conversations, Asara Garvey, whose, whose name is, is, is extremely peculiar to me. So the brother is anti-Abrahamic traditions, but is pro-Marcus Garvey. Now, for anybody who's familiar with, with Marcus Garvey in the least, understands that Marcus Garvey was a follower of the Abra Abrahamic traditions himself, and, and the Abrahamic traditions played a large role in his movement, of which uh, their, their, their main saying and statement was, one God, one aim, one destiny. And the concept was, is taking whatever practice you have going back to Ethiopia with it, or seeing God through the, through the lens of Ethiopia, etc., right? Um, Again, Garvey, Garvey uh, recognized Moses, the, the God of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He, he recognized Jesus. He recognized Muhammad as a black prophet, etc. Um, all those type of things there. And so hearing somebody like, like Sarah Garvey speak is very interesting to me, very peculiar, because he's anti-Abraham traditions. Um, and he specifically uh, he specifically makes them seem, uh, makes them out to be racist and um, in, in, in the dialogue we had in the dialogue he had with Brother Imam and the debate he had with Imam Bashir um, he made he made two basic premises or two basic arguments that I want to address here he says that Muhammad was a white man and two he basically breaks down the fact that if you follow Islam you're you're like the tool of the white man the so-called white man I um, mean, you follow an anti-African tradition. And so we went round and round on that a little bit. Um, and there were certain points I could have pressed him on that I didn't press him on. And actually, I, did, I didn't get a chance to press him on because when I was going to press him on, press him on, other people jumped in. And I didn't want to cut people off, etc. And looking back and watching it, like, so uh, real quick, I've also linked down below the debate that he had with Imam Bashir on, on Black Eyes TV 7. And I, and I also put down, um, I linked it below in the description, dialogue that he, I, Brother Kansu, had, et cetera, um, with Brother Rich and Brother Solomon. Uh, I, I put I put the, the, the link to the re-upload uh, on SVD Live on there. So go check both of them out and go go subscribe to both channels. Go check and go subscribe uh, to Brother Rich's channel, Black Eyes TV 7. Go subscribe to Brother Solomon's channel, uh, S SVD Live. Um, both, channel have, both channels have good content on it. Um, but when I watched that 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 re-upload, again I hadn't seen the dialogue in a, in a long time, and something that's very easy to press on it is, is is this fallacy here was, was Muhammad being white because typically now I've spoken with Sarah about this I spoke with Gabs about this I've heard Kalam talk about this I'm talking to a whole bunch of cats in the UK hangouts about this whole concept here right Muhammad being white I've heard the concept it's, it's just it's hilarious to me to to to, to listen to because almost. I've heard people in America like like Sarah Sue and say they make the same argument, right? Now to the last one, they'll also try to tell you, or they'll come to my Israelite brothers and whatnot and be like, Oh, Moses was learned in all the ways of the Egyptians. 
they you know what I'm saying they they claim the fact that the all Moses law, uh, knowledge and whatnot was taken from the Egyptians, therefore um, it was stolen from Africa, etc. And that the Egyptians are black, right? Okay, got it, Coach. Egyptians are African. Egyptians are black. Got it, Coach. Um, now, they they wanted they want to use that 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 argument and leave it right there. But now, when I follow when I follow that logic, I look at Abraham, right? And they'll also argue that he was a Kushite, right? So that's 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 a whole nother day, a whole nother argument. I'm, I'm gonna leave that one alone. But when you follow the argument, um, Abraham's wife that he had Ishmael with was Egyptian, and not only was she Egyptian, she got an Egyptian wife for Ishmael. Now, this is the lineage in the Abraham tradition that the Prophet lost them. Muhammad comes from. Um, and again, this, this is the same lineage that my man says is white. Um, that these Arabians are white. That the Arabians that the Prophet Muhammad lost them came from are white. Now, if the Egyptians are black and African to people like Sarah Garvey, Gabs, Sarah Sutton said, etc. Right? Hagar's black. Ishmael's black. Ishmael's at the very least half Egyptian. Now, Ishmael's children, right? Three quarters Egyptian at least. At least. Now, this lineage. That the prophet's lost them comes from is supposedly not black even though it's heavily egyptian in this base and it's not black even though it's heavily centered in in southern arabia east africa southern arabia and in many ways the many ways these these cultures are indistinguishable i have a hard time understanding this and so when we were having the dialogue or whatnot, um, one of the first things I have in my mind is because we're talking about me being Moorish and a whole bunch of other things there. Right. And if, if, if you ever studied the Moorish paradigm, one of the first things we'll see is that more applies to a concept of people who are of African or who are Berber and Arab descent um, in Africa, in Spain, etc., in, uh, in multiple places in the Mediterranean who are Muslim descent, etc. Um, and a lot of people like to point point out the fact that like, oh, see those Arabs are they're 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 so called pale Arabs and whatnot. And it's like all right, fam, y'all y'all crack me up with that because in modern day times you can go to you can go look at Saudi Arabia, right? And this is this is typical almost anywhere you go to sa the south side of almost any country and it gets dark, bro. I'm trying to tell you the south side is always the darkest side, straight up and down. Like for instance. You go to you go to Granada in Spain, right? It's darker than it's darker than up north, right? You go to uh, you go to the southern parts of Morocco, southern parts of, of North Africa. Period. It's darker than what it is in the north, right? Um, same thing with Saudi Arabia. Now, now, people, I'm about to share my screen real quick. I'm about to share my screen real quick. Can I do that one? Can I share the application window? I can. Now. In modern Saudi Arabia, a lot of people like to be like, oh, with the Arabians. I got shitty tires can hold up. Man. So in modern times, they're like, they're like, oh, the pale Arab, the pale Arab, the pale Arab. I tell everybody this, man, go check out the Arabian, the, the Saudi Arabian soccer team, the national football team, the national soccer team. Go check out what that team actually looks like. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go click on a bunch of pictures of these cats. Right, this ain't just one team. Look at these. Look at. Tell me these cats right there don't look straight out of West Africa. You tell me that right there. Now you can see how th how these people look East African all day. You see how my my dude looks mixed right. My dude right there almost could could, could go anywhere in North Africa. Right. That dude obviously looks like the so-called Pelier. Right. You see these brothers here. You see this brother here also looking like the mixture over here. You know what I'm saying? 
Hold on. I'm just gonna click through some click through some photos. Now here you got the lighter skin dudes all over the place, but check this out. You still got my man's over here. Okay, what's this over here, bam? Again. This is Saudi Arabia, fam. You telling me these people here are supposedly not black. These are supposedly not black Arabs. Not black Arabians. Okay. Let's see. Oh, man. I, again, I, I see these guys. I, I'm with you on that. Now, you got some Somalian people that look like that right there. You know? Come on, look at these people. Look at my look at my dude. Come on, fam. Are they transplants? Let me guess. They got him from Nigeria and just brought him to the squad. Nah, fam. You already know that there's black Arabia. You already know that Southern Arabia is, is, is mad dark. You already know what it is, right? And you know why you know what it is? Let me check this out here. No, that's too small. Damn. Sin, look at the squad, all right? Now, see, I'm looking at this. I'm like, okay, I can see Ishmael, you know what I'm saying, being three quarters Egyptian. Like, I, I buy your story. The Egyptians are black. And Ishmael's children are three quarters Egyptian at the very least, right? And they're kicking in that area in between Egypt and Arabia. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're, they're around nothing but black people. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I'm, and they're Kush, around Kushites and, and, and Egyptians, etc. Okay. This color makes sense to me. Now, when you talk about people invading from the north, looking like these people that makes sense but i'm saying how do you explain these cats how does that work they're not black no more just because they're in saudi arabia they don't they don't look african they don't got the phenotypes of an african just because they're in saudi arabia now you already know at one point in time the red sea wasn't even there i right? It wasn't even there. Go back to the time period where, 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 where the Sphinx dates back to and you tell me that the Red Sea was there the, the way it is now. You know what I'm saying? Go back 10, 12, 15,000 years ago. You know what I'm saying? You tell me that 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 again, I'm not even gonna I'm, I'm not even gonna press the issue, right? I could make this a long video. I can get into a whole bunch of stuff from like Black Arabia, right? I might I'm probably gonna do that on another one. Uh, real, real talk, I just woke up. And I was just feeling a bird of my uh, bird of my, my my spine about this, right? So I might I'm I might do something later. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm just saying. So these people make sense to me, being in Arabia, if the Arabians supposedly come from a lineage of, of Cushitic and Egyptian people, it it makes one hundred percent sense to me, right? Now, when I'm having this conversation with with uh, with with Sarah, you can go again, go check it out below. It's in the description, right? I'm talking to him about the fact that that like he's like, oh, well, the the, the Quran came down in you know in Quraysh. It's a Quraysh book, blah blah blah. I'm like, okay, so let's talk about this, right? Let let's talk about this because the Quran doesn't say it came down in Quraysh. It says it came down in Arabic. Clarify Arabic that, and there's words in that Arabic that. That only makes sense. Like even even us uh, Muslim scholars talk about coming from from uh, from Katani and Southern Arabian and whatnot. And we actually do the history on on like the linguistics of, of the dialect that that the that the Quran was transmitted in. It was transmitted in a Southern Arabian dialect. So when you go check out the Southern Arabian dialect, the Southern Arabian script and whatnot, you can see that it's again. Well, let's let's go check this out, right? Branch from the proto sinaitic script is about the, from the ninth century BC. It was used for writing the old South, South Arabian languages of the Sabaic, Katabonic, which is also again, I'll, I'll go check that in a second. Hadramatic, Menaean, uh, Hasidic, and the Ease and Demotic, right? 
the earliest inscriptions in the, or oh, excuse me, not demotic, the demotic. Right. So again, you can see what that's Africa. Right. The earliest inscriptions in the script date to the ninth century BC in, in the north northern Red Sea region in Eritrea. Again. There are no letters for vowels, which are marked by uh, mattress uh, electionists, right? So again, you can see the Gigi script being the child system, right? This is an e this this is the script that that the uh, that the Ethiopian Tewahedo Church and that the Ethiopian Jews use for for their for their uh, for the Torahs and their Gospels and their Bible and whatnot, right? Um, this is the base for what for what uh, Amharic turned into, or what turned into Amharic, etc., right? Parent systems, proto synatic and Egyptian hieroglyphs. Okay. So I don't understand how this is not African. I really don't understand that. Linguistically speaking, culturally speaking. So let's check out this Sabaic, right? Let's go. Let's go check out part of this this language script, right? This this, this the, the the old South South Arabian language, right? Let's let's check out the map on this. Joe. How about this? So these are all related areas, linguistically, culturally, all the type of stuff, right? You can see this. You already know what it is. And I'm pretty damn sure, like, again, your trees up here, all that, like, or the Demont was that, yeah, that's African. This is the same language structure, right? Now, another part I brought up was the fact, like, okay, y'all need to bring Kalam on, because without Kalam, uh, Sarah knows nothing. Now, anybody who's heard me talk about Sarah enough, like, I respect the dude on certain levels, right? And I respect his opinion on many things. I, th I think skepticism is necessary in any conversation, right? Particularly about how people get out of a problem. I have respect for him. My dude is a paid actor. He's an actor with a script. He doesn't know anything about Islam. Um, and without Kalam, he really don't know anything about Islam. And that's that's evident whenever you talk to him. And in the conversation, the dialogue, I told him, you know what you should do? You should go check out Kalam's book on the matter, right? Because he's talking about he's talking about Islam being anti origin, uh, anti African, right? And I was like, check this out, man. He's got a book called the hidden east african origins of islam you should go check it out by kalam l titans tv that's my dude kalam l i'll let you boy the east african origins of islam by kalam l this is an interesting read man. a very interesting read and so check this out the, read um, here's the aim of it sarah please listen to this please pay attention the aim of this discourse is to establish better race relations in the world by revealing a fundamental truth concerning the contributions of the African continent and its people to civilization. Mine and the humanities is to make a people aware of their contribution to civilization. And the second lesson is to teach them about other civilizations. By this dissemination of the truth about the civilization of individual peoples, a better understanding among them and a proper appraisal of each other should follow. This notion is based upon the notion of the great mastermind he shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free consequently consequently this discourse is an attempt to show that the true authors of islamic philosophy were not the pale arabs quote in quotations but the people of northeast africa arabia commonly called the egyptians ethiopians and arabs and and the praise and honor falsely given to the so-called pale arabs the pale was in quote right to the people this consequent consequently this theft of the african legacy by the pit of the erroneous world opinion that the african continent has made no contribution to civilization people are naturally backward this is this is the misrepresentation that has become the basis of race prejudice which has affected all people of color i am happy to to be able to bring this information to the attention of the world so that on the one hand all races and creeds might know the truth and free themselves from those prejudices which have corrupted human relations 
and on the other hand, that the people of African origin might be emancipated from their serfdom of inferiority complex on a, a new era of freedom in which they would free men with full human rights. Right? Now check this out. This is part of the research stuff that he gets into, right? Research question. Were Africans involved in the origins of Islam? The key terms uh, being used to shape this treaty are as follows. African, one, it's a noun, person from Africa. Two, adjective, relating to Africa or people of African descent. This relation extends to a group of people sharing the same culture, history, language, etc. Uh, it involves a, a cause to participate in acti activity or situation, etc. Right? Origin, the, the, the point or place where something begins, arises, or is derived. Islam. One, a noun, the religion of the Muslims, a monotheistic faith regarded as revealed through Muhammad as the prophet of Allah. The research question is asking, were any persons of African descent, particularly black, uh, part uh, participate in the beginning of the Islamic religion as revealed by the prophet Muhammad? Uh, Salah Salaam in there, right? That's me, right? Who is Muhammad? Chapter one. Now, y'all got to read this for yourself, right? This is some interesting stuff here, right? Muhammad, the Ethiopian prophet. Right, I'll just read a little bit of this here, and I'll, I'll jump down a couple spots, right? So you can see some other stuff. But this gets interesting. The claim being made here is that Muhammad, in his era, would have been considered an Ethiopian. This claim is inadvertently speaking of a person's nationality and/or identity. The problem here is that we are 1,400 years removed from the era of Muhammad and geographically estranged, let alone culturally separated uh, from the people of Mecca. So how may we possibly know whether Muhammad was an Ethiopian or not? Well, this may be done by investigating the historical records to establish how or in what manner people identify themselves and each other. Secondly, we may use common understanding to establish what a person's nationality was, is, right? And there's a lot that, 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 that Kalam gets into in this, right? It's a very good read. I ain't gonna lie to you. Very good read. And I'll even bring on a little bit of this here, but Ethiops, right? The term Ethiopian, Ethiopian term, uh, uh, stems from the Greek. Uh, Ethiops, right? Uh, Ethiopia, blah, 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 blah. Burnt, it means burnt face, uh, literally dark, uh, black faced. It, it's first attestations, 50 BC, Iliad and Odyssey, right? Breaking down the Ethiopian. And breaking down all kind of breakdowns of where the Ethiopians are being cited, etc. Right, and where and all that type of how, all that type of stuff. Right, breaks down their description, the description of the Ethiopians, further than being black faced and consequently black skinned flat to to identify all kind of descriptions throughout history. You're giving it right. Interesting one. He further gives us depth of how geographically dispersed. Stating that they dwelt all along the Nile, both on the east side and the west side, as well as the islands along the Nile, even as far east and as far west as Libya. Right? So he sums it all up with the examples of what an, an Ethiopian is may have seemed exhaustive for this segment. Yet I found that it was incumbent to enumerate them for the sake of not being misconstrued, as we can see a classical perspective of what an Ethiopian is from the sample listed above is that an Ethiopian is a person of dark black skin complexion, curly hair, snub nose, uh, autochthones, right? Uh, practice circumcision, inhabit the classical regions of the Nile, Libya, and Arabia. Inhabit the classical regions of the Nile, Libya, and Arabia. Arabia, right? Stuff on nationality. Inter that is an interesting read. Y'all should definitely go check that out. But here's where my man's up, right? He breaks down the empire of, Exo, of, of Aksum, right? Talks about Sabians, all kind of people there, right? I'm just, good read, good read. But you see here that it, the empire of Aksum, right? It covers Yemen and it covers Mecca in the Hajjah. Sarah, if you haven't gone to read this book, this is just a snippet of it, right? Sarah, I mean, uh, uh, Kalama gives you the whole thing. Kalam said this joint's like 100 plus pages, right? So, 
I'm just saying. Go holler at your boy and have him teach about the East African origins of Islam. Anti-African. Because even Kalam tells you he he break he, he's cool with the he's cool with the with the with the, with the Islam of the Sudan and West Africa, etc. Right? And when I break down to you the Moors that the, the Islam of the Moors was definitely not anti all the anti-African Ishmael and Arab supremacy that you talk about that I agree is enforced by certain Muslims now, that comes from the Hadith and not the Quran. You already know what time that is, because we've had many conversations about that. And so so you, you can see what a Quranist form of Islam looks like when 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 the Arabians go into Ethiopia and when the Moors uh, go into Spain for the first 400 years. You see what that looks like. That's not any way, shape or way, shape or form. And again, addressing the fallacy, how is Muhammad white when the lineage of the people again? I got it, man. I might have to go do it again. I might have to go do it again, right? Saudi Arabian soccer team, fam. Football team for my UK people, right? My dude. You're trying to tell me these are white people. Now, technically, ain't no one in this picture white. Technically, ain't no one technically pale pale, right? But you, my dude, you gonna tell me my dude's right here? Come on now, Sarah. I'm just knock off the logical fallacy, fam. Knock off the logical fallacy. I appreciate that that you have issues with Islam, um, and we've we've spoken about these issues, and I share a lot of those issues with you. And I have no issue with, with teaming up with you about about dealing with certain issues, i.e., like the the concept of of, of Aisha being six and nine years old, etc. Like that's ridiculous, right? I got no issue with teaming up with you on on stuff like that. Um, I got no issue with, with teaming up with you on on trying to get my my Muslim brothers to to understand the freedom of speech more and the concept of there is no compulsion of is, in Islam and how and how those those uh, concepts interact and also the concept of of uh, a law does not favor the aggressor and all that kind of stuff, right? I'm with you on all that. But, the, but these logical fallacies of if you support Islam and if you're a Muslim and you're so-called black and African and whatnot, that you're, that you're, that you're uh, somehow toting for the white man or you're toting for a so-called pale Arab, like, come on, man. That's beyond a logical fallacy. And you know that when you rock the last name Garvey on purpose and it's not your given name. So you, if you can show me where, where, where Marcus Garvey said Muhammad wasn't a black dude, I'm good. I'll rock with you. But until then, knock it off. So with that, fam, I'm about to get out of here. You know what I'm saying? I hope y'all enjoyed. I'm probably going to come back and do some thorough, in-depth stuff on this because because it, it, it's bugging me the more I hear this stuff because it's a big logical fallacy. And people, people like the people who are, are, are espousing the fallacy know that they're that they're giving out a fallacy. And it's sad that they, it's sad that they do it. false it ain't personal bro i'm even not say i'm even down to say this go subscribe on my man's channel you know what i'm saying because he says some good stuff sometimes i don't, I don't disagree with everything he says right but there's there, like again a skepticism is necessary to a point i'll just say it like that to a point with that y'all have a good one shout out to all the uk man them uh, shout out to everybody in the SVDL uh, uh, debate league. Y'all have a good one. Peace.